That's right. So we are here in Tallinn, Estonia. They are one of the first countries to use blockchain on a national scale, and they're using it to make sure that all of the information that they have online is safe. The way it does that is it tracks your data in a ledger. We've heard about blockchain, and it does this with health data, your tax data. All of this data is available online. All you need is an ID card here. And 99% of government services are available online. A big part of that push has been in the public sector. The government mandated that all health data was digitized about a decade ago. So today, 95% of health data is available online. Prescriptions are all available online as well. We had a chance to sit down yesterday with the president of Estonia, Kirsty Kellyleid. Here's what she told us about the effort to get her country here. Most of the services in Estonia, when it concerns public service, uh, is digital. Which, of course, if you think in the private sector context, well, most of the world has it digital. So in this sense, you could say that in Estonia, government offers what normally only private sector can offer to people. And uh, for us, it's a mystery that other public sectors uh, have been rather reluctant to uh, get digital because it's so comfortable. Is the rest of Europe behind when it comes to being that digital? We have a generation who has grown up knowing that uh, you communicate digitally with your school because we have an e-school system, uh, with your doctor because there's e-health, etc. It started at the turn of the century and Estonians have always had, uh, since then, uh, a possibility to safely identify each other online. And this is actually the only element where Estonia differs from uh, most of the other public service offerings uh, in Europe and elsewhere. What was behind Estonia's decision to really choose to invest in this digitalization process? In Estonia, it was not the question of, uh, well, uh, firing people from uh, civil service in order to cut costs and replace with digital. We simply were only developing our, uh, our service offer to our people. And we did it straight away digitally because uh, it was simply cheaper, easier. And also, I mean, people found it convenient. And now the process has uh, become citizen driven. So people are now demanding that state becomes proactive based on the information what the state already has. So uh, people are now leading the process, not anymore the government. We couldn't turn back. Talk about any lessons Estonia might offer to other countries looking to become a digital society like you are here. The lesson is you have to make sure that all kind of technology can be used in your country in a legally safe way because we don't only do digital. We also have Estonian Genome Foundation, which offers to uh, already 10% of the population a possibility to know the risks of genetic diseases. Also how to gather and hold and, and use this kind of information. What are the rights of a person whose data it is? What are the rights of the Genome Foundation? How this data could be used for medical investigation? This is also regulated and this is so important. If you want to be uh, the best in digital, the best in AI, you cannot do it simply by, I don't know, spending public money or doing clever public procurement, which is also very important. But well, most countries cannot go it alone. So what we do here is we become quick uh, technological followers, offering private sector a safe legal environment to, well, try out their ideas here. And we do it in a format which is also safe to our citizens. So you heard a lot of talk about safety there. Of course, with all of this data online, specifically sensitive data like health records, there's a big push for safety. We mentioned blockchain as one way to kind of keep track of where all that data is and who's seen your data. Another thing that uh, Estonia has done here is they have an entire data embassy, which has a copy of all of the country's data in Luxembourg. So if, for example, some of the agencies were to undergo a cyber attack here, there would be data in a separate place. Now, we asked her a lot about, we asked the president about cybersecurity, specifically when it comes to the threat from Estonia's next door neighbor, which is Russia. We will have more on her answers about that next, later in the show. Back to you guys. Elizabeth, let me ask you about first mover advantage, because typically when there's new technology or new frontiers to be tested, the country that does that first can set the standards and regulations. Is that what's happening with Estonia, it's setting the standards that could be adopted by, say, the rest of Europe? Absolutely. One of the messages that the president had was that a lot of other countries here in Europe need to take the approach that Estonia has taken, not just to being open towards new technology, but also towards regulating it. So the regulations go hand in hand. They have very strong rules that protect user data. So you own all of your data. That's something that the rest of Europe has just started to catch on to when it comes to regulations like GDPR. So they've said 
they've been compliant with these for a long time already. They think other people need to uh, hurry up the process because the world is only getting more digital. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.